Hi and welcome back to my series on modifying and fixing the uh, Chinese 7x12 mini lathe. Um, in my previous uh, videos, which I'll, I'll put a link up here in the in the top corner to the playlist, in my previous videos I've scraped the bed back into alignment, made a test bar, found out that the headstock is mm, poorly, poorly aligned horizontally, it's, it's facing towards the, the front but is quite well aligned vertically at this stage which I'll probably be able to screw up once I start scraping this uh, scraping the head to the bed to fix that horizontal alignment issue so let's get into it to make sure I'm doing the right thing I've got out my copy of uh, Connolly's machine tool recon reconditioning um, basically what we're looking for here is at the end uh, for such a tiny little lathe, I guess we're looking for somewhere in the range of a, a half a thou of um, misalignment over 12 inches f uh, vertically and horizontally. It's up here, we're looking for uh, th probably three tenths of an inch horizontally over 12 inches. My test bar is not 12 inches long, it's only 8, so I'll have to, so this will be uh, 2 tenths and this will be yeah, about 3 and a half tenths. On one of the websites, uh, one of the forums, I can't remember which one, there was a bit of a discussion about it being confusing that I jump backwards and forwards between microns, or thousandth of a millimeter, uh, ten thousandth of an inch, or hundredth of an inch gauges, but come on guys, it's just simple ratio problems in maths. You, you've got to be able to work this stuff out, huh? This is the first error I'm working on. So if I zero at this, this end of the test bar, we can see that the, the test bar is moving to the front of the lathe by about 22 ten thousandth of an inch. Uh, and that needs to come down to within two ten thousandth of an inch over this eight inches. To correct that error I need to rotate the headstock in this direction. So that means I need to take metal off that back side here. So I need to take metal off this part and cor correspondingly off this pad. Once I've taken metal off those opposing surfaces which will rotate the headstock on the on the bed, uh, it will also widen the V's which means the headstock will drop down some and I'm going to end up having to remove metal off this back way to even things back up again. But first let's do those two. Touching up the cutting edges on the hand scraper. I'll blow up the bed of the lathe and take a print just to see how the interface between the headstock and the base actually looks. This can be a reasonably heavy, heavy inking to start with because we'll see how it develops once we get closer to the final um, final dimensions. It's a bit too heavy. So that shows us that it's basically sitting on th roughly three points. This area, this area, and through the middle here. Now obviously we need it to be sitting on the front and rear of the VOA, of the VOA uh, to get a good alignment. So I'm going to need to go through this area and relieve it. Of 
course I'm throwing cast iron chips straight into my gearbox down here, but I'm going to be disassembling everything and cleaning it before final assembly anyway. I'll give it three double scrapings. Here you can see how horrible the ways are as they come from the factory. Yeah, not exactly high quality workmanship there. There's a big heavy groove down the middle of this way. I've now relieved that center section. You can see I'm getting a, a few bearing marks on this way here uh, and a little bit here, which is good. So at least the lathe is now sitting on the, on the areas where it's supposed to sit. Uh, there's also a few points down through here. Now, when I first did the initial alignment measurement, it was obviously sitting on this center section. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is mount the headstock back on the lathe, set up the dial test indicator again, and just check what the horizontal alignment actually looks like now that it's not sitting on this kind of indeterminate area, but is actually sitting in the V-ways properly. Now that I've taken that center section out and relieved it back and the headstock is actually sitting on the V-ways roughly where it's supposed to be, it's actually got worse horizontally. So I'm now looking at about a 30 ten thousandth inch. Let's just call it a 30 deviation and I'm aiming for two. So these are the areas I'm cutting, this side. And this side. After one pass, the error has dropped by about a third. So hopefully with two more passes I, must, I should be getting close to the correct alignment. After three passes I'm getting quite close. Still got a wee bit to go but I'm down to about seven ten thousandth aiming for, aiming for two but I think I also need to start looking at the vertical the vertical alignment in this plane because obviously one's going to um, affect the other. Well that's good news the changes I've done so far have not really affected the vertical alignment so I'm within two tenths along my eight inches vertically which is actually in spec. We'll see how that develops um, as we change, as we finish off the scraping in. But so far it's looking promising. promising. This is the vertical alignment. It's looking very good. We're in, within about one ten thousandth of an inch across the eight the eight inches um, which is less than a third of the limit that would be allowed by Connolly. In the horizontal I still have a little more work to do because we're still point, pointing forward about seven tenths we're, we're with a limit of two. It's getting quite difficult to do the scraping trying to balance um, vertical alignment horizontal alignment and also scraping for points to try and get a, to try and broaden out the contact areas which the uh, clamps against the bed it get, becomes quite difficult as you get close I've now scraped it so that the horizontal alignment is within limits it's coming out at about two tenths which is right on the limit that um, Connolly gives which I'm pretty happy with the bearing's not perfect. Um, 
everything outside of about this line is off the side of the bed, so there should be no bearing there. But you can see we've got, we do have a bit of bearing right throughout the area where the bolts go. Uh, also, we do have bearing on both sides of the V-way around these bolts. I'm not going to try and scrape it anymore for, uh, to try and improve that bearing. These, these ways are so narrow, we're only talking about uh, about 9 millimeters, maybe a little less than 3 eighths of an inch between here and here. Um, I'm just not good enough at scraping to improve that much more than I already have. But I've got decent bearing at all four uh, bolt locations, so we'll clamp it down, measure it again and see if that's enough. I've now bolted down the, the bed's screws, the hold down screws, and must say I'm very happy with the result. There's minimal movement in the uh, alignment as the head screws bolted down and I've got very little run out out at 200 millimeters or 8 inches from the from the spindle. So I'm going to call that a finished. The headstock alignment is now finished to the to the bed and we need to move on to the next topic. If any of you are curious as to why um, something like a mini lathe has a pretty poor reputation. Um, apart from the fact that they were they're built terribly and the, the fits and finishes they come out of the manufacturer are basically horrible. Um, even once you align everything, there's just not that much iron in this machine. Uh, and here's a good example of that. The, the limitations on um, horizontal alignment for a tool room lathe would give you about Two on this dial, two ten thousandth of a millimeter of an inch, uh, over this over this uh, distance. Now, just grabbing this with your hands and giving it a twist, it, you can easily exceed that by ten times in either direction. Even though those head head bolts are bolted down, so what you're seeing here is I can twist this lathe bed through. Two thousandth of an inch and plus minus, just with a little bit of hand pressure. So there really is no replacement for um, for mass in, in, in the rigidity of a machine tool. Um, and this is one of the large reasons why what I'm doing here is basically polishing a turd because the cutting forces, especially once things start chattering, will easily exceed these kind of loads. That's not to rag on the the mini lathe completely, you know. If if this is all you've got space for, then you know you can still get jo uh, jobs done on it. But there's no point believing that this is, will ever be able to perform at the same levels of a as a decent industrial lathe can, which is probably going to have at least ten times the mass for the same uh, envelope of turning and uh, of length and diameter.